Scientist. It's Justin here again um, with a very unique ecosystem that is, that is special to us here at YMCA Camp Sloper. It is our lovely pond, which you can see in the background. Um, we are going to go down there in just a second and kind of explore our pond and see what lives down there, what you may hear, what you may see, and then we're going to take a pond sample and bring it back to our nature center and study it. But before we get down there, I would like you guys to think and write down what you think. What living things do you think live in Sloper Pond and call the pond its home? Think about that as we're heading our, making our way down to the pond. We are down here by Sloper Pond. Now before we get a pond sample and put it in the bowl to examine it, I want you guys just to use your eyes looking at the video. Uh, and maybe if you could hear sounds, we're going to be very quiet for the next 10 to 15 seconds. And I want you guys to write down anything that from the video that you see that is living in the Sloper Pond or near Sloper Pond. It could be a plant, it could be an animal or an insect. What is around Sloper Pond that you could see or hear through the video? Ready, go. So now that you took a moment, I know that everyone saw our swan friend in our pond. That is an animal that certainly calls Sloper Pond its home. But what you probably didn't notice maybe that live around the pond, we got trees. We got a nice area of grass around our pond here. So that's an example of living things, right? Uh, and I bet you guys did not guess some of the littler things that live in our pond. Living organisms that are smaller that you can barely see with your eye. Okay, and we're going to take a sample out of the pond and take it up to our nature center and study it. Alright, so I'm going to go get that sample for you guys right now. Alright, we got our pond sample. We're excited to go back up to the Myers Nature Center and study our pond sample. But before we leave the pond, I just want you guys to look at the pond. I always mention this to our fourth grade students on their trip. I want you guys to notice the level of the pond. Do you think the water level right now is high or low? Some, sometimes it's, it's higher, sometimes it's lower. What do you think it is right now? I want you guys to try to take a guess and explain why you chose that guess. I'll answer it for you. So. Right now, our water level is very high. You're probably asking, well, why is it high? Now, what has it been doing weather-wise the last couple of weeks? Really, in the past few days, it's been very rainy, which means it raises the level of our pond. Thank you. All right, we're back in the Nature Center with our pond sample. Now, from here, we are not gonna, we got a pretty big sample if you can see here. So what we need to do is make the sample smaller so it's easier for us to see what's in there. See what living things we can find within this pond sample we have. So in order to do that, we need to grab a tray and grab our scooper. Okay, you're gonna scoop a little bit of your sample onto the tray. You don't wanna go too crazy and get a lot in there because you want to be able to see and move some things around. Okay? Now, to help me with this, I have science, scientist Too Tall Tom and scientist Nick coming in the screen in just a second. They are going to get a small sample from our big sample and place it on the tray. Okay? And then from there, they are going to gently, with a, with a popsicle stick, 
They are going to gently look for things that are living and moving around maybe. They're going to use their eyes. They're going to move some sand and some water and some dirt around and see if they can find anything living. From there, we are going to identify what they have found. Now, as you can see, Nick and Two Tall Tom are examining their samples. Hopefully, they could find something. Oh, I got something. So, I got oh, something. Two Tall Tom has found something. Yep, he's a little guy. He's super tiny. I can barely see him. Um, he's right at the tip of my oh. popsicle stick right there. You see him moving. I see him There's moving, another one Tom. right there, too. Yes. Uh, I wish I had something that was I could use to see him better. It's super tiny. So. Tom, what I would say is if you could try to get him on your popsicle stick. Sure. Ooh, we have, his friends are coming too. While you're doing that, I'm going to show the students. We have another iPad with a microscope on it that is attached to its camera. As you can see, it, it's zooming fast. in on the table. Look at that. Oh, as it zooms in on the table. I so, have I got a lot of cool things. So if Too Tall Tom can get the living thing that he saw on his popsicle stick, we'll zoom in on it with our other iPad. Wow, you got him. Okay. So he's got him. He's, Tom's going to hold it. Here, this is the zoom. This is without the microscope right now. As you can see, he's there. Now Tom's going to put the microscope over and we're going to see what he really looks like. Wow. That's a good find. It's so blurry. It's a little blurry. It's got to focus. Oh, I had it. All right, we're checking in to see what if Nick has had the same luck as Tom. We've been very lucky. Justin. Yes. This is my third bug I found, or whatever they're called. Aquatic beings. Okay. So I have two right here on the end. Oh, he's he just crawled right over. You want to right grab off. the iPad, Nick? Well, yeah. The microscope. Whoa, this guy is moving this guy's quickly. Moving. Nick. Let's see what he looks like. I had a really big guy. Where is he? There, there he is. is. He's moving quick, Justin. He is. Oh. Trying to focus for you. There it goes. There it is. Perfect. Justin, I think that's another side swimmer. Is that it? is a side swimmer, Nick, and I'm going to show everybody a scud. what a scud slash side, side swimmer. So I'm going to show the students what that is. Here it is on our identification chart right here. Seven pairs of legs. The first two may be claw-like. Body is somewhat higher than it is wide. Usually swims with a sideways motion. He's moving around. And he's lot. moving around sideways. Justin, Nick. I got another one right here. Let's see if Is he... it the same thing? Let's see. It looks like another Scud side swimmer guy. It definitely is, Nick. Good finds. Justin, I think I have something else as well. You have a different one? I have a very different one. Yeah, I got another one too. Okay. Wow, too. we're finding a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go we're gonna go to Nick and then we'll go right over to Tutal Tom Station. Justin, I don't know. Can you see this right now? See this guy right here? I don't know if if I can even take him out of here. He's so big. You don't even need to see it with a microscope. Do you I'm know gonna, what it is? I'm I looking do. right now. Is it a mayfly or a dragonfly? Oh, it looks like a dragonfly. I would say it's a dragonfly. Nick. Look at this, Justin, right here. I think it's a dragonfly right there. It's kind of got that big body. Yeah, a wider body than the rest. That's what my guess would be a dragonfly. All right, back with Too Tall Tom. I think he has a, a different insect for us. Yeah, so check out the screen right there. I've got him. He's moving around a little bit. Check out the number of legs he has. He's, yep. oh, there he goes. He's moving. And He's... I got to check out his tail because there's a lot of different creatures that kind of look similar and really the tail and sometimes the legs are the things that give it away the most. He's got those beady eyes on the side of his head. He doesn't think that he likes the light. But if I look back to the, the sheet over there, you could probably see he had three parts to his tail. 
So that damselfly and his, the type of legs he had were definitely consistent with what this picture looks like right here. So the damselfly uh, having the long spoon-like jaws, the, uh, the tails, three they had the three pairs of legs. Dragonflies have a broad shape. So it wasn't a broad shape like a dragonfly, it had a really skinny body. If we pan back over to him, he's right there. Tom, I found one too. Oh, friends. Yeah. Right there. So if you check him out again, you can kind of see how he's moving, his leg structure, his tail, where his head is compared to the rest of his body, his abdomen. So I would say that's a damselfly. A little closer using some technology and microscopes, we found that there's other living things inside our pond, except uh, besides fish and the swan. There's other little, tinier li living things that live in the pond, but they are important to our pond. So I want you guys to think about why those little side swimmers or the damselfly. Why, where, why are those important to Sloper Pond? I hope you guys have a couple guesses. So the reason they're important, they're important for the food chain, right? So some of the bigger things like the swan, like the fish, they eat some of these, these living things out of the pond, okay? Um, now, the dragonfly, for example, the big dragonfly, that's probably not a typical dragonfly that you guys are normally seeing. So it starts like that and then it grows and flies out of our pond, but that's the story behind the dragonfly. While Tom's finishing up the science at Sloper uh, Pond study, uh, we're wondering and hoping that you, that you as, as fourth grade scientists have some questions for us as well. Please make sure to write down those questions um, as you had them when you went through the study with us today. Um, and we would be happy to answer those questions for you.